I'm just going to talk to you about a few things I think are very important to what you want to accomplish in life. How many of you guys plan on going to college? Everybody. Where y'all plan on going? I know where Jeremy and Johnny are going. What about the rest of you? North Texas. Texas. Long one. So you and Johnny are going to be there together. North Texas. Oh, North Texas. Okay, up in Denton. Okay, good deal. <laughs> So what do you guys think is important when you talk about empowering yourself for success? What, what are one of the most vital things you think would be important to empower yourself? Goals. Goals. You can talk about goals. How many have written down goals? Just two. You know only 3% of society writes down goals? Come on in, we're waiting for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> only 3% of society writes down any goals. And the other 97% work for that 3%. You can have goals in your head, but it's important that you write them down. Because if you don't write them down, you don't see them all the time. They're just in your head. A lot of us have big goals in our heads, but we will not write them down because we, we don't want to take the time to do it. When you don't write goals down for yourself, other people set your expectations. How many of you realize that? How many of you, now I know all of y'all are going to raise your hands to this question. question. How many of your parents have set your goals for you? Oh, y'all don't want to tell the truth. Now, I know every last one of your parents have set your goals for you. Look here, you're going to school, you're going to college, you're going to get this degree, because I see it so. They, they might not say it in those exact terms, but that's what they're telling you, right? Y'all can be honest, I'm not going to tell them, I'm not going to look up your parents and say, hey, you know, I had your child in here and they said you're making them do this. No. Whenever you write down goals, make sure they're your goals. It's very important. Reminds me of a story about a gentleman who had low expectations all his life, and he was at a carnival. And he saw the sign said fortune teller. And so he went in and paid the lady his money. And at this time, he was about 30 years old. And uh, the fortune teller read his poem and said, you're going to be broken, disgusted until age 45. And the gentleman was very sad about that. And he said, well, OK, what's going to happen at age 45? She said, oh, you'll be used to it. <laughs> Come on in. How y'all feeling? Good. All right. Good. Y'all ready for lunch? Yeah. All right. Did y'all come to my session because there was nothing left to? <laughs> Just want to have a little fun, make it a little lighter today. You know, be, be, y'all can be interactive with me as well. I don't mind being interrupted. But how many think a proper attitude, a good attitude, is very important in what you're trying to accomplish? Y'all not too interactive, are you? <laughs> I'm not going to bite you. Feel free to participate. I'm not going to pull you out and have you come up here with me. Feel free to be interactive. Y'all realize a good attitude is very important? Yes. How many of you know people with negative attitudes? <laughs> yes. How many of you see that in school every day? How many of you do not like to be around people like that? <laughs> Most of us don't want to be around people who are negative. Y'all even realize that the weatherman on TV is negative? Had y'all thought about that? The weatherman will come on TV and he'll tell you there's a 20% chance of rain. Why didn't he tell you there was an 80% chance of sun? Maybe he likes rain. Maybe he likes rain. You might be right. But when, when y'all think about rain, and for me, I like to be outdoors. So when you think about rain, what are your thoughts toward that day versus, versus it being sunny outside? What are your thoughts toward rain versus sun? Sleep. How many of you like to be outside of, of, you know, like the other day after all this cold weather we had when it was 70 degrees last year? How many of you were excited about that? <laughs> Almost everybody. You know, so it, it's the same analogy with, you know, the rain and the sun and the cold weather and the sun. We like when it's pretty days outside because we like to do things, right? So you have to make sure your attitude is proper. How many are familiar with the lion, the king of the jungle? All of us all. Do you, do you realize why the lion is the king of the jungle? It's because of his attitude. He's not the biggest. 
He's not the tallest, he's not the strongest, and he's not the fastest. But he's the king of the jungle because of his attitude. The elephant is scared of the lion, and the elephant could pounce on the lion, right? Because of the strength he has. But the elephant, when he sees the lion, he lives in fear of the lion because of the lion's attitude. That's the type of attitude, I'm not saying to pounce on people, but you need to have the attitude of a lion, a strong attitude, a strong positive attitude. Each one of us has 40 to 50,000 thoughts per day going on in our heads. Over 80% of those thoughts are negative. That just shows you how powerful negative is. On average, it's about 16 positives to erase one negative in our brain. That's real powerful, isn't it? That's very powerful. Don't let your emotions control you. You know, a lot of us go off and, you know, somebody upsets us, and I know it happens a lot at the high school level. You know, you have certain people in a clique, you don't like them, they don't like you, and your emotions control you. You know, sometimes, y'all have y'all don't have any situation with fighting here, do y'all? If y'all school. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I guess some things haven't changed since I was in school. Uh, you know, those things still go on. Don't let emotions control you. I, I read this study, you know, last year, and it was talking about violence in schools. And it was talking about it, and I don't have the percentages with me, but it talked about the amount of students at the high school level that talked back and cursed the teacher out. It talked about the students that hit a teacher. Now, when I came through school, I graduated high school in 1989. Send me to jail instead of telling my parents I hit a teacher. Don't tell my parents you can't find me because going home was going to be worse than anything the police officer could have did to me. Y'all understand me? How many of you have parents like that? That's very good to know. I'm, I'm glad that's still going on. Y'all need to be beat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it, it's very important that we respect authority. <laughs> and we can only respect authority when we have the proper attitudes. And a lot of times we don't have a proper attitude because of our associations that we have, the friends that we hang around. If you tell me the five people that you hang with on a regular basis, I don't need to ask you anything about yourself. I know everything I need to know about you because of the people you associate with. And that's not going to change for the rest of your life. Once you get in college, you're going to find five people that you're going to hang with on a regular basis. Once you get out of college, you're going to have five people that you hang with on a regular basis. I don't hang with anybody that I went to high school or college with anymore. You know, I'll still go see them every now and then, but we don't hang together. We're going in different directions. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so when you get to college, like Johnny told me, he's going to study chemical engineer. Jeremy's going to study accountant. Aaron's going to be a public speaker. So guess who they're going to gravitate to once they get to college? people who are going in that same degree plan. And, and that's going to be the same for practically all of you guys. I played football in college. Guess who I spent most of my time with? Football players. You know, even though I was taking honors classes in college, I didn't want to hang with those people. They were boring. <laughs> How many of you know people that are boring? How many of you are that person? <laughs> that would be me. You know, I had my nephew with me yesterday. He's eight years old. He goes to a private school and he was out. And my sister told me yesterday when she picked him up after she got off work, she said, I told him, you go going to Uncle's house and spend a day with Uncle. Uncle boring. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with being boring. You know, sometimes it's good. Sometimes when we um, go to different levels in our lives, we have to get rid of some of our past associations. When you guys graduate from high school, you're going to leave some people behind. You're not going to ever talk to some of these people again, with the exception of Facebook. You know, but you're not going to talk to these people again, for the most part. I have people on my Facebook page that say they graduated with me. I don't remember. You know, it's not a knock against them. You know, but I just chose to forget about people that I didn't hang with anyway. And when I went to a new level. And sometimes, if your best friend or friends don't have the same attitude, they don't have to have the same goals as you do, but they need to have a positive attitude. And if they don't have a positive attitude, and you do, and every time you get around them, it's a drain on you mentally, you have a decision to make. You have to determine, come on in. We've been waiting for y'all. 
And so you have to make a decision. Am I going to continue with this relationship that's mentally draining me every time I'm with this individual? Or am I going to make the decision to go ahead and follow and pursue my goals and then the separation might be able to strengthen our friendship later on? You have to make that determination. Every time you go to a new level in life, associations must change. How many of you guys think my wife would have been happy if when I got married, I married all of my previous girlfriends? You think she'd have been happy with that? No. And so that's one relationship. Your, your friendship relationship is going to have to change. And one of the things you need to do is, is find your mentor. Find somebody that's in life where you want to be or, or you want to go. And ask that person to mentor you. You know, study that person. Find out how that person lives. Find out how that person thinks. Find out what that person reads. Because one of the biggest indicators of your attitude is the information that you put in your brain on a daily basis. I read a lot. I read about three to four books a month. And that's down. It used to be about six to seven books a month I used to read. And people ask me all the time, how do you read that much? I don't watch much TV. You know, I do like to watch like National Geographic and Discovery Channel and, and stuff like that. You know, I, I don't even watch sports a whole lot now. You know, once I got out of playing football, I, I just stopped watching sports altogether. I, I watched my first full football game when TCU played uh, Utah State early in football season. That was the first full athletic event I had watched in 15 years. And I know a lot of people center their lives around entertainment. A lot of us like to be entertained, right? We like to watch the sporting events to watch somebody else live. You need to make sure you're preparing yourself to live. How many people are going to pay to come watch you do what you do? That's what you need to ask yourself. How many of you would like people to pay to come watch you work? <clears throat> That'd be nice, huh? See, when you watch these professional athletes and entertainers on TV, you're watching them work. They're getting paid multi-millions of dollars to have you watch them. Well, I, I don't watch them. That's just me. And uh, because a lot of them don't have the type of morals and principles that I live by anyway, so I don't care how good they are on TV on, on an athletic field. So association is important. Goal setting is important. How many of you guys may have big dreams? What about the rest of you that didn't raise your hand? No dreams, small dreams? What about that? How many of you guys in here like fast cars? How many of you young ladies in here like to shop? Now, I know every hand should have went up for that. Yeah. Now, for the ones whose hands didn't go up, if I gave you $5,000 and told you you had to spend it by, by 3 o'clock, how many of you bring me some money back if I told you you had to bring everything back? So y'all like to shop. So that's part of your dream. And, and part of setting your goals is you have some dreams out there that, that you want to realize. And all dreams are not material. One of my dreams is to be able to make so much money doing motivational speaking that I can travel around the country for people that are not able to pay me at my own expense. And so you have, you have a lot of people in society telling you money is bad. No, money is bad if the person is bad. Money is neutral. If you want to make $5 million a year, write that down. If you want to make $20 million a year, write it down. If you want to make $50,000 a year, write it down. If you like fast cars, I, I personally like Ferraris. And if I see somebody driving down the street in a Ferrari, I say, what are you doing in my car? How many of you feel like that? <laughs> the, the people at the Ferrari dealership know me. I go in there so much just to touch and feel on the car. Because if you don't go and touch the things that, that inspire and motivate you, you're never going to accomplish them. So I go in there and I sit in and... You know, they don't even acknowledge me anymore when I walk in a dealership because they see me so much. But I, I have my camera in there and I'm taking pictures and I print my pictures off and I have them all around the house. And, and most times I have one in the car with me because that inspires me. Find out what inspires you. You know, it might not be a car. It might not be shopping. It might not be a house. It might be, be just like I like to help and serve people. That might be your goal. You know, college is not for everybody. It's not. You know, maybe you want to learn a trade. Write it down. 
write it down. You know, if you don't set goals for yourself, other people are going to impose their expectations upon you. It's kind of like the story I, I read, this lady got on the bus with a baby. And the bus driver told her, that's the ugliest baby I've ever seen in my life. And she slammed her money down in the fare box and walked to the back of the bus huffing and puffing. And there was a gentleman sitting over next to her and he said, ma'am, what's wrong with you? Looks like something bothering you. Well, that bus driver gave me the worst compliment anybody could pay a mother. He said, well, he's a public servant. He shouldn't be treating you like that. I think you need to give him a piece of your mind. She said, I think I'll do that. He said, well, let me hold that pet monkey for you. And so the guy insulted her as well. And so other people out there will impose their thought process on you. And, and you can't allow that to happen. You, you have to remove emotions from your decision making. When you have low expectations, when you don't write goals down, that's exactly what you're going to accomplish. Write them down. It's very important that you write your goals down. Like I said, 3% write down the goals. 97% work, work for others. How many of you want to own your own business? Anybody in here? What type of business? Um, businesses that help other businesses with their problems. Okay. What about you? Retail. Retail. Dealership. Dealership. Engineer. Engineer. Any, I saw some. Did I see any other hands up? Uh, production. Okay. What about over here? Business owner. Well, Aaron, you're going to be a speaker, so you're going to be a, a business owner. I plan on doing that on the side. More than likely, I'll be a physical therapist. Okay. But would you like your own, own practice? Yeah. Okay. Good deal. There's nothing wrong with owning your own business. Society is conditioning y'all to be mediocre. Have y'all recognized that? No, I'm glad. I didn't have anybody talking to me about this type of stuff when I was in school. I didn't learn this stuff till later on in life. You know, because what are y'all hearing? The same thing I heard from my parents. Go to school, get a good education, so you can get a good job with the government or a high paying company, right? That's not always true. Unemployment is high right now. You know why? Because that's still industrial age thinking that our parents are promoting. There's nothing wrong with that because there are still some industries that need people. But a lot of these jobs are being outsourced overseas now and that's why unemployment is so high. We have to start moving in where technology and the information age is taking us. And that's why so many people get left behind because they have no marketable skills. So make sure you set your goals. Make sure your attitude is proper. You know, when you think about another animal, I like to talk about the eagle as well. I like to talk about the eagle and the lion because of the attitude. They both dominate their kingdoms, right? The lion dominates the land kingdom. The eagle dominates the air kingdom. And an eagle can fly up to 40,000 feet in the air. That's about as high as some airliners fly. Now, if an eagle meets another bird in flight, it's the only bird that can fly at that altitude. If an eagle meets another bird in flight, guess what it has to be? Another eagle. So if you keep finding yourself surrounded by pigeons and ducks, that means you're flying too low, right? You don't want to be around pigeons and ducks. They're not going to gravitate too much. How many of you realize a lot of your classmates are pigeons and ducks? <laughs> it's not going to change when you become an adult either because you have people always trying to pull you down. And you know why they're trying to pull you down? One simple reason is because if you succeed, you have taken away all excuses for them to succeed as well. And so, because I don't want to do anything, I want you to do nothing with me. How many of you have people that you know like that? Of course. And so you, you have people of all types out there, but it's, it's going to boil down to two kinds. Those that's going to do something and those that's not. That's what it's going to boil down to. And so make sure you have a positive attitude at all times. You know, I can pretty much have a great day every day because before I leave my house every day, I'm saying positive words to myself before I leave. Like I have a positive self-image. I believe in myself and my abilities. I have a magnetic personality. Sharp, ambitious people want to be around me at all times. Now, do y'all feel a power in those words? Can y'all feel a power in those words? It's powerful to get up and tell yourself what kind of day you're going to have before you leave. And that way nothing shakes my tree when I leave my house. Because when you wake up in the morning a lot of times, 
You can be feeling good, but you haven't told yourself you're feeling good. So you can be feeling good, you feel like you dress good, and that's another thing that's going to help your self-image is to make sure you dress properly. Make sure you dress properly at all times. I like the way you guys dress for this organization. That, that's really impressed me. But make sure you dress properly. I don't like to see guys walking around with their pants hanging down and showing my wife their underwear. I want to kick them in the rear end. I'm going to be honest with you. Because you're disrespecting my wife. I don't care about your fashion. You're disrespecting all ladies around when you walk around like that. So I'm very impressed when I see you guys show up in shirts and ties and suits and young ladies have dresses and pantsuits on. But that's very important that your appearance is good and, and your language is good. You know, I don't, I was telling a couple of guys earlier, I don't curse around my wife. I don't curse at all. I don't drink alcohol. So I don't allow people in my house to do those things either. And if I invite you over and you do that thing, you're not going to be invited back. That's just the way it is. And so it's very important. And, and back to my point about waking up in the morning, you can be feeling good. You, you're dressing good. You look in the mirror, you check everything out. And then suppose the first person you meet asks you, are you sick? Well, no. No, I'm not sick. And you go on another 30, 45 minutes, and you run into another person and say, are you feeling well today? What's starting to happen to your mindset? So by the time noon comes, guess how you feeling? You feeling sick. But you left, you left the house feeling good. You had no ailments whatsoever, but because somebody imposed their thought process on you about the way you look, you accepted that behavior and that mindset. Don't let anybody shake your tree. Don't let anybody else impose your thoughts on you if they're negative. Maintain positive thoughts at all times. Now, I really like to stay on positive thoughts. Be enthusiastic about everything you do. You know, tell yourself, I am enthusiastic. I think enthusiastic. I believe in enthusiasm. I'm excited with everything that I do and set out to do. Tell yourself these positive affirming words every day and watch how things and situations start to change around you. When your attitude changes for the better, watch how more and more people start trying to gravitate to be around. People want to be around people that are positive all the time. Y'all recognize that? We already noticed, and when, when I asked earlier how many people don't like being around negative folks. We all want to be around people that are uplifting, right? All of us. You know, I have some family members, and if you have an ailment, they got it too. Trust me. You know, if, I don't even like to call them because it, it tears my spirit down when I get off the phone with them. I'm like, man, you know, I can be dead sleep, and if some, if my phone rings at three in the morning, I answer just like I've been up all the time. Hey, man, we sleep. I say, no, nah, I was waiting on your call. <laughs> it's all how you approach things. Now, I was telling Johnny earlier, I get excited when I come and I speak. I can't sleep the night before I speak. I went to sleep about 3.30 this morning because I'm excited. And my wife knows when I'm excited. She knows when there's an event coming up because the night before I can't sleep. And that's because I want to make sure I come out and give you guys my heart. I'm, I'm positive. I, I believe in the things I'm talking about. And you have to find something that you believe in and you have to go for it all the way. You know what I mean? Find out what you believe in. What, find out what you're going to stand for and stand for. It. That's the most important thing. A lot of people don't stand for anything, so they fall for everything. We talked about, uh, with Jeremy, we talked about how you receive these emails now from these guys over in London or Africa talking about, you know, they have this large sum of money waiting for you, just giving your account information. <laughs> Those are scams. Those are people that are trying to take advantage of you. And if you, if you don't have enough knowledge to know, hey, something's wrong here, you will fall for that and give them your account information. And my thoughts are if you had this money, but just send me a cashier's check to my P.O. box. You got my name already. <laughs> That's all you need to know. But there are a lot of people out there trying to shortcut life. There's no shortcut. You know, you, you got to go out there and you got to work for everything that you want and need. Unfortunately, they, we have a lot of people that want to buy what they want and expect everybody else to take care of the needs. How I many of you recognize that? You know, like my sister, she's a school teacher. 
Her students come to school with Air Jordans on, $200 shoe, but they don't have a pencil. Y'all see something wrong with that? Yeah, there's something wrong with that mindset. I'm going to buy what I want. I'm, I hope you take care of my needs. And that's why so many people live a mediocre lifestyle. There's a book out there called Living Above the Level of Mediocrity by a guy named Charles Swindoll. I, I recommend you guys find that, find that book and you know, see what it has to say about living a mediocre lifestyle. See, when, you have, when you're high school, college, early 20s, you have big dreams. But you get out there in the job world a little bit, life beats up on you, your dreams start to shrink. And most of us have huge, gigantic dreams. But our income is only this big. So guess what we do? We don't in work to increase our income. We look at ways we can shrink our dreams. <laughs> How many of you know people like that, adults? Y'all don't want to tell her. Huh? You, you don't have to, but a lot of people are like that. We're not going to find a way to increase our income. We're going to shrink our dreams. Especially guys my age, ladies my age. I'll be 40 this year. And most people I talk to my age, they've already accepted their lot in life. They don't want to try to accomplish anything. It's going to, you know, it, it might take me five to ten years to go out there and, and work at something to accomplish another goal. Well, if you don't work, uh, work on accomplishing something else, Five and ten years is still going to come anyway, right? You know, so life is going to happen to you. Life is going to pass. You can't control time. All you can do is try to make time more productive with what you do with it. And so a lot of people won't do that. So remember, proper attitude, positive thinking. Don't shrink your dreams for anybody. If you allow anybody to steal your dream, it was never a dream. It was only a wish. Make sure you write down your goals. Right? You, you should have three types of goals. You should have short term. Everybody here seniors or what? Sophomore. Sophomore. Freshman. Freshman. Really? And you big old dude. Sorry. Thought you were seniors. What? That's saw some hands over here. Senior. Sophomore. Sophomore. Okay, freshman. Okay, so what you guys need to do based on where you are, your seniors. Your short-term goals is what's going to happen between now and the fall semester. That, that's short-term. Your mid-term goals are going to be what's going to happen between my first year of college, first semester of college, to maybe my first four to five years out of college. And then you need to have some long-term goals after that. You know, what, what do I want my life to stand for after that? Because we're all looking for our purpose. We all have a purpose for, be, for being here. And we're all searching and looking for it. Your freshmen, sophomores, juniors, your short-term goals is what, what am I going to do between now and the time I graduate as a senior? That's a short-term goal for you. And then your mid-term goals are going to go from college to your first four to five years Attention after. Attention all FBLA members. So, Workshops will be ending at 11.45. So I'm, I'm going to cut it off right there, and I'm going to open the floor for questions. Lunch. Also, and, uh, 